Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. When you ask a boa enthusiast what his or her favorite locality of true red tail boa is, you'll probably get a variety of different answers. However, there's a general consensus that there is one particular locality which represents the most classic look of what the true red tail has to offer. These animals have crisp, bold patterns, often with peak saddles and very high contrast, and most importantly, long, bright red tails. And that locality, of course, is the small South American country of Suriname. I'm very fortunate to have some really world-class examples of Suriname boas in my collection that I'm currently raising for future breeding stock. So today I wanted to share with you some of these animals so you might get an idea of the types of Suriname boas that I hope to produce in the years to come. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel. I have a lot of ideas for videos on different topics of keeping and breeding boas in captivity, as well as regular updates on my boa breeding activities, and I wouldn't want you to miss any future videos. This first animal is a 2014 holdback male that I produced. And this guy immediately stood out as the number one pick of the litter. He just had such a very clean, crisp pattern with very little background markings. And he had these really nice, symmetrical, perfectly shaped peak saddles. So what was unusual is that both of the uh, mother and father of this animal, they were beautiful boas, but they didn't have these strongly peak saddles. They were kind of moderately peak saddles. And this guy just got the best combination of genes from both of the parents. You can see he also has this really nice long red tail. And just a beautiful look overall. This beautiful light tan color with this pinkish reddish tints on his sides. This guy is also um, a very laid back animal. He's much more mellow than many of my other two red tails. He's a joy to handle. You can see he's got such a handsome face with these crisp, clean markings on his face. This guy is now six years old, and I actually paired him up for the first time this year. So, fingers crossed that I might have some babies from this particular male uh, on the ground later this summer. But just a great classic true uh, red tail boa. Another holdback from my 2014 Suriname litter is this female. She's a full sibling to the male I just showed you. And this is another gorgeous Suriname boa. You can see her peak saddles. You'll notice though that her color is a little different. She's kind of more of a purplish overall color. I like the male. She's got this very high contrast and these beautiful head markings. You can see she has a little more speckling than the male, particularly on her belly. Uh, as long as, as well as her long red tail. So just overall a gorgeous true red tail boa from Suriname. And so this female I hope to pair up for the first time next year with one of my other holdback Surinams from a different litter. And just a gorgeous animal to look at. One last boa from 2014. This animal I actually didn't produce. She was bred by a breeder named Russell Lafleur. And what uh, sets this boa apart, as you can see, is her small size. So this animal is going on six years old, but she's only about maybe four feet, maybe a little over four feet long. And she has not been stunted, if you're thinking that. She's been fed the same feeding regimen I use for my other true red tails. So she got fed about every other week for her first three years. And now I'm feeding her about once every three weeks. She's currently eating medium uh, size rats. So she's healthy. Uh, she's just a small boa, you know, and th so there's a genetic difference in size in these boas, and some of them are not gonna get that big. We've all seen these pictures of these giant true red tails that are 12 or 13 feet long. Personally, I've never seen a boa that big. I know they do exist, but I think they're pretty rare. And you know, most adults, Suriname and other true red tail boas are gonna be in the six to eight foot range. So this particular female, she's a little more clingy than some of my other true red tails. 
but she's got kind of a cool spirited personality um, beautiful markings kind of this buckskin kind of brown color with pink highlights and a beautiful red tail so I expect that she's going to be ready for breeding next year uh, it'll be a have to figure out what male to pair her up with because as you can see she is kind of small uh, for most Suriname boas of this age. Next I want to show you a couple animals born in 2016 from my Prometheus bloodline of Suriname true red tail boas and this male is possibly my favorite from that litter and he most closely resembles the originator of that line who of course is named Prometheus but this animal, you can see, he just has this great amount of contrast. He's got these peaked but somewhat asymmetrical shaped saddles. A lot of background markings. A very wild look. He, he doesn't have the clean look. He has kind of a more of a dirty wild look. And he's got this insanely long bright red tail. Possibly the longest reddest tail I've seen in a red tail boa. So this guy is now going on four years old. Um, it's possible he'll be ready to breed next year. Haven't figured out. You know, the males can breed a little younger than the females. But just a gorgeous boa that really looks like his father. And his body is also starting to get a little more gray like his father as he's getting older. He started off with a quite tan body and now he's showing kind of more of the grayish coloration that's made his father famous. This is a female from that same 2016 Prometheus litter. And this animal has a kind of a different look than the male I just showed you. So overall she's got a much cleaner pattern. You can see her saddles are very symmetrical. Um, she has these connected saddles, just a very clean look overall. And then you can see she's got this head saddle that's connected by a neck stripe. The mother of this litter was from the Florida Red Tails bloodline and this is a characteristic of the FLRT bloodline of Suriname boas. But just a very beautiful clean looking animal. Um, you can also see she's got that famous very long red tail that's uh, synonymous with my Prometheus bloodline. Just a very beautiful looking true red tail boa. And so it'll probably be a few years before this girl, girl breeds. I would think at least two, if not three years. But we'll just see how she continues to grow and develop uh, as the years go by. One more animal that was sired by Prometheus. This is a female from that was born in 2017. Actually to a different mother than the two Prometheus line animals I just showed you. And you can see that this animal has a different background color. She's more of a purplish peachy background color than the other two that were a little more tan. Her mother actually was a little different in color. She has more of the purplish pink color. Um, what's also characteristic of this animal is she's got these beautiful asymmetric saddles. You can see they're kind of uniquely shaped, different from other saddles I've seen in boas. They're peaked, but they have this weird um, asymmetric shape with these little dots in the center of background color. Really beautiful. And she's got um, a nice long tail, a little bit darker in color than the other two animals I showed you. So it'll be interesting to see what comes from this boa in the years ahead. The last holdback Suriname I want to share with you is from my last litter of Surinams produced in 2018. And this was from a father produced by Matthew Blackburn from the Fudo bloodline with a Florida Red Tails bloodline female. And so this animal has a lot of the classic looks of the Suriname Red Tails. You can see she's got these nice peaked saddles that are very symmetrical. This tannish pink background color. And you can see the very long red tail. You know, so every Suriname boa is a little bit different. They all are kind of variations on a theme. And this animal, of course, has a lot in common with the other boas I showed you. But if you study these minor variations, you can see all of the differences associated with different bloodlines of Suriname boa 
as well as different individuals. Just, you know, such a huge variety of different possible looks and they're all beautiful in their own way. So as I mentioned, I have one pairing this year of Surinams and I'm keeping my fingers crossed for a litter later this year. It's actually from that first mail that I showed you. Um, I hope to produce these animals again. So if you've been interested in possibly acquiring one, please stay tuned for future videos updating my breeding progress. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.